last class, we introduced this uh, equation, that the angle of twist is CL over GJ. The angle of twist is kind of this, this angle that your cross-section twists compared to where it was where it is you know from from one end to another all right angle twist is tl over gj it's actually only tl over gj in the elastic region because we used the fact that g is uh stress over strain uh we use that in and that's only true in the elastic region all right angle twist tl over gj not not too bad right so let's do some examples Let's do some examples. So we've got these series of gears. Determine the angle of twist of gear B relative to gear A. So from here all the way to there, what is the angle of twist? Got to be really careful with my positives and negatives because maybe it comes twists this way, but then twists back that way, twists back this way, that way. So I need to find the TL over GJ in every section and then add up section A to, you know, C, D, E, section A, C, section C, D, section D, E, section E, B, right? Break them up into sections because this T is changing in each section. So here's the torque. We need to find the T in each section. And we did a problem last class where you had to find the torque in each section and so this is important that you're able to find this torque t all right so maybe we start right here uh if we cut it right here what do we need to counteract that 600 going over the top we we, we would need 600 going back this way and that would be a positive 600 in that section okay all right now if we come back to the next one if we had 600 that way and now you got 900 going back the other way this one is going to be negative 300. and then if we've got 500 going back the other way then it's going to be positive 200. so i could go slower i mean i'm not you know, you, you could really cut these, redraw them every time, or just kind of think about, you know, what, what would this add or subtract to it? Uh, and then we've got another 300, the same way that we just went. Uh, this would be positive 500. And does that make sense? I could have actually come from the other direction, and I, would have, I still would have gotten positive 500. All right, so finding the torque in each section, especially for just a, a, a problem like this. I hope that expect you can do that. So if you need to, you gotta cut it and ask yourself, what internal torque do I need here at this cut to counteract all the other ones? What internal torque do I need to sum up all the moments equal to zero? That's really what we're doing, is we're finding the internal torque necessary to sum the moments equal to zero. And if it's right hand rule, thumb is pointing out of the cut, that's a positive internal torque. But if right hand rule, thumb is pointed into the cut, then it's a negative. Okay, so now we can find the angle of twist. Angle of twist uh, would be TL over GJ of that first section plus TL over GJ of that section plus TL over GJ plus TL over GJ. I think we have four sections. We can just add up the twist in every section. Now, I think it is worth taking, taking a second and realizing that uh, I, I don't think I want to divide all of those by G and J every time. I don't know if I even gave you the, G, oh yeah, G is 75 and we can find J by that. Uh, if it's the same material all throughout, then you can just take this G out, factor it out, and only multiply it times once, right? If it's the same cross-section, then you can take that J out. If J is the same for all four sections, you can take it out and factor it. You still got to multiply it, but you only have to multiply it once. 
And then in this one, this is kind of a special one. The length of all those is the same. So I'm going to factor out the L over GJ. L over GJ. Because they're the same, uh, but these torques, and I should probably label them, but these torques are all different. Does that make sense? And I think it's worth your time to see how much you could factor out. Only if it's constant in all four sections. All right, so the length, 200 millimeters. The G, 75 GPA, let's do 75,000 MPA. I, I don't know if I mentioned the units here, but I really need to. TL over GJ is unitless, uh, but it's in radians. Okay, not degrees. It's an angle of twist that's in radians. So I should say units uh, radians. Our units are radians. Radians is kind of a dimensionless unit, so all of my units should cancel out. The J, let's go to our formula sheet just to slow down and make sure we don't make a mistake. Pi by two R to the fourth, not D, not diameter, but radius to the fourth. All right, so, and now I can multiply, uh, let's see, what was it? Positive 600 Newton meters, minus 300 Newton meters, plus 200, plus 500, and all of those units are Newton meters. Oh, and there's my problem, all right? Um, those torques, those moments were in Newton meters, Newton meters. So I'm going to multiply this times a thousand to change it to Newton millimeters. And then all of my units would cancel out. MPA millimeters, two sets of millimeters on the top, four on the bottom and a newton over a millimeter squared is mpa not not too bad so do that math and get that the angle of twist is 0 0.01061 radians uh, you can leave it like that if i ask for it in degrees I, I do think you can convert radians to degrees. I, I do expect you to be able to convert radians to degrees. So in case I ask for it in degrees, if you want to convert radians, I, I, I do 360 is 2 pi. Most people do 180 over pi. I just like to think a whole revolution, a whole 360 is equal to 2 pi radians. 0 0.608 degrees. So you see that... Those are different numbers, but the same thing. 0 0.01061 radians or 0 0.608 degrees. Yes.